Oh, they love each other. Bonnie girl, Clyde is being a sweet little baby angel and you're just being a punk. Hey guys, what's up and welcome to my channel. My name is Miley. This is my new addition to my family, Clyde. And every week I do a new DIY video. And this week I am clearly busting out the pumpkins and decorating for fall. I have a lot planned out, but first up is making these pumpkins look better. So let's get into it. Okay, I am in here in my studio, just living my best fall crafting DIY life. It has been a while since I have just sat down and made some more craftier DIYs. I have missed this, I have missed fall, and now it is time, let's begin. As you saw in the intro by all the pumpkins surrounding me, I went out and bought a crap ton of pumpkins. Some of the pumpkins look like this. They're cheap, they're from the dollar store, and they're made of styrofoam, so we can't expect much when you're only paying a dollar for something. And I'm not exactly sure what I was trying to show here by rubbing the two pumpkins together. And then I have some pumpkins that look like this. They're clearly much nicer. They were not a dollar. They weren't 10 bucks like this tag says, so that's lying to you. They were on sale, but they're still definitely nicer quality than the dollar store pumpkins. I also did get one bigger one just to have some variety in sizes. And then I also picked up these small little filler pumpkins at the dollar store as well. First step in making these pumpkins look nicer, let's bring in some gesso. Okay, that was supposed to like roll really nicely in and then my gesso just wouldn't roll. So yeah, here's some gesso. If you're gonna paint anything, you gotta make sure you prime the surface first. And especially if you're trying to cover up something that's originally bright, like these pumpkins. So then I began the lovely task of priming all of these pumpkins. All of these pumpkins. During this time of gessoing, I realized I have a lot of pumpkins here. So many pumpkins. It just kept going and the gessoing was never ending and it was taking a long time. And I started to think, okay, I might have to change up my plan of how I want to paint these pumpkins. If you know, I want to finish sometime this year. So my original plan for painting these pumpkins was to do colorful, realistic looking pumpkins. It makes sense if you don't think about it too hard. But since that was going to take layers of paint and just take a long time in general, I decided to scale it back a little bit. And all of the cheap pumpkins, I kept just one solid color. So I picked out a few different fall colors and painted two pumpkins for each color. Then for all of the more expensive looking pumpkins, I painted those to hopefully look a little bit more realistic. I thought by doing this it would make the more expensive pumpkins stand out and then push the cheaper pumpkins to the background and act as a colorful backdrop to showcase the more expensive pumpkins. And now thinking about it, I put way more thought into this pumpkin display than I thought. And then once all of the less expensive pumpkins were painted, I brought in the more expensive pumpkins and began painting those. I started off by gessoing each one of them. Okay, yep, gesso is done. And I wanted to keep these white so that they would pop off the more colorful cheap pumpkins, but just make them look more realistic. So to make these white pumpkins look more realistic, I started off by working a tan color into each one of the creases and then I blended that out with white and then brought in some brown to further add some dimension to the cracks and again just hopefully make these white pumpkins look more realistic. But actually you know what I think I did read that white pumpkins are now a thing. People have like genetically modified some pumpkins to be white. 
that's what people choose to spend their time doing. But you know what? Hey, I, I guess I can't judge. I'm sitting here painting fake pumpkins to look more realistic. That is what I'm choosing to spend my time doing. And that is all of the pumpkins done and painted. I picked up this crate off of Facebook Marketplace for a few bucks. It was already screwed together like this as a shelf. So I used that to display all of my different pumpkins. But I am super happy with how this turned out and I think my goal of having the more expensive pumpkins stand out was definitely achieved. Okay, let's move on to the next set of DIYs and from here on out we've got a little bit of some woodwork very simple woodworking stuffs mixed with a little bit of painting and crafting. Okay, so my first DIY up in this next section after the pumpkin saga is making a fun fall welcome sign. Why is it a fall welcome sign? Well, because of course it has a pumpkin on it. So I went and got a one by four at six feet and cut it directly in half, of course making it three feet. And then taking one of those boards, I made three pocket holes in it so that I could attach the two boards side by side and make them one thick piece. And once those two boards were attached together, I flipped them over so that the pocket holes are on the back now and I stained the whole thing using a dark walnut stain. I then let that sit for a while and I went and worked on my other DIYs that you haven't seen yet unless you keep watching my video, so you should definitely do that. But then I came back to this guy and the stain was all dry. So using my pencil, I drew out or drew out, wrote out, yeah, I wrote out the word welcome down this plank. And then using my white Posca paint marker, I went over each one of those letters, but I did hit a point where the Posca marker was getting all gunked up with stain and wasn't really working anymore. So I switched over to some just good old fashioned paint and a paintbrush. Bonnie and Clyde, I need you guys to be quiet. My goal was achieved of getting Bonnie a friend, but my goal of making my house quiet for voiceovers was not achieved. And now, as you can see, I made the O in Welcome a pumpkin. And pumpkins are super easy to draw and paint. It's just three ovals smushed together with a stem on top. And that is my fun fall welcome sign. So now everybody will feel welcome at my house even though everybody was already welcome because I love people, so come over. Okay, so this next DIY I think is by far my easiest DIY I have ever done on my channel. So it's pretty common that the black cat is usually associated with fall and Halloween and supposed to be super spooky wooky, which I never understood. What's spooky wooky about this face? So when I was looking up fall decor, I kept seeing people using the black cat in all of their decorations. I couldn't only include black cats in my decorations. Bonnie is already feeling a little salty and unloved since we got her little brother clearly. So I also had to include Bonnie into my display. I took a 1x4 and cut two pieces at 10 inches and two pieces at 3 inches. I then drew a triangle at the top of each 10 inch piece and using my jigsaw I cut that triangle out. And that makes some kitty cat ears. I then painted one of those pieces white and the other one black. And then using my white Posca paint marker, I added a face to the black cat. And using my black Posca paint marker, I added a face to the white cat. To finish off these cats, I took two pieces of twine and tied that in a bow around each one. And this part is optional because these pieces stand up on their own, but since mine are gonna be outside, I wanted to make them a bit sturdier, so I took those pieces that I cut at three inches, made two pocket holes in each one, and used that to attach them to the back of each cat. Okay, I know these were super easy, but I'm kind of obsessed with these things. They're so cute. I just wish the real Bonnie and Clyde were being as quiet and as still as these are. Now it's time for the fourth and final fall DIY. 
So I took a 1x4 and cut it into 4 pieces at 2 feet and then I stacked those 4 pieces together. Like you see here, I then began to sketch out a pumpkin over all of these pieces. I then did the same thing with 6 more pieces that I cut at 12 inches long. After sketching out each one of the pumpkins, I drew some lines to indicate where I wanted to put some pocket holes. And using those pocket holes, I attached all those pieces of wood together and then using my jigsaw, I cut each one of those pumpkin shapes out. And for the tall pumpkin, I stained it using a darker stain, and for the shorter pumpkin, a lighter stain. And once the tall pumpkin was dry, I took some white paint and began to dry brush white paint over the whole pumpkin, leaving the stem paint free. And then with the short light pumpkin, I did the same thing using black paint. And here are my two pumpkins all complete. I think these were really fun and they also add a fun decor element. I'm getting strong farmhouse vibes, but I think fall decor just lends itself very easily to a farmhouse style. And here is the full front door display all complete. I also brought out two of my DIYs that I made last year. I will put that video link in the description down below. But I really like how this whole display came together. All of these DIYs were so quick and so easy. Well, except for painting the pumpkins, that wasn't quick. But all of the wood DIYs were super quick and super easy. I hope you liked this video, and as always, thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys next week. Bye, guys.